It has been a long six years for the Nebraska Sprint Car faithful. And it is finally time. 410 Sprint Cars return to the Eagle Raceway. $28,000 up for grabs. Rico Avru, Brent Marks. Pace the field, we are green at Eagle. Rico brings him down the back straightaway. Brent Marks on his heels, down the back shoot. Brent Anthony back three, third, Larson four, but Jerese is for the lead. Off of turn for Rico will lead lap one. Great jump there and great commitment in the top side by Rico. He leads, Marks off the turn two. Macri goes to the third spot, but here's a battle of the lead. Marks dials up the inside lane, not strong enough. Can't quite get there. It's Kyle Larson now closing in on Anthony Macri in the third spot. Macri goes to the top as they go side by side again to the lead. Down the back straightaway, Rico on the top. Marks to the bottom, slider, no, can't get there yet. Rico doing a great job kind of cutting off Marks' line. Marks kind of needs the whole racetrack, I think. And Rico's doing exactly what he needs to do to hold on to the race lead. And they run now, nose to tail, oh, Marks hopped over the cushion, turns it down the hill and holds on to second. Macri right there in the third spot, Larson fourth battle now in the fifth position. Buddy Kofoy battling hard there as they work off of turn number four. Cole Macedo racing Kofoy for the fifth spot, down into turn number three and out of four. Kofoy, the Indy race part 71, holds on to the fifth spot. Macedo falls back to six. Larson's on the move ahead of them, challenging Anthony Macri for the third spot. Weeder is about to encounter lap traffic already. Going to be tricky for him because there's lap cars that are actually running the high side of the racetrack, but here comes Marks again. Good challenge on the bottom, down the back straightaway. Rico, too strong for us. Here comes Marks, can't get by him. Rico, back him on the outside, he'll hold the top spot. What does Rico do here in lap traffic as they all funnel to the bottom part of the racetrack? At least the front or the back two do. That gives Rico the high line all to himself. Cushion's getting ledgy up there. Marks starts to close in again in second. Marks is closing in as is Kyle Larson. Now looks to the inside of Anthony Macri for the third spot in turn number two by half a car length, but Macri gets by. Jack over slow. He pulls to the end of We stay green. Last car side by side. And Enrico Avery battle for third once again. Anthony Macri trying to stick around Kyle Larson. He slides back to the bottom groove. Turns it down the hill. Larson drives back by Macri in third. Marks is all over Avery for the lead. Larson snookered him in turn number one. He went about middle of the racetrack instead of the top, and Macri went up there to block. Here comes Larson back on the bottom. Can't get a run on the other back straightaway. Macri holds him off. They're closing in. Your leaders are one and two. Now side by side for third as Kyle tries the inside. Marks is right there. Gets to the left rear of Avery. Macri's there as well as Larson. Throw a blanket over the top four as they work down the back straightaway. 29 laps to go. 11 laps in. Avery around the left corner. Blake Hahn. Marks the second. Larson finally clears Macri for third. Macri bobbled there as they work down the back shoot. Bobbled on the high side. Allowed Kyle to get by. Now Rico to the bottom of turn number four is Macri still having trouble on the high side of three and four. Let's see what Avery does. He's on the bottom here and gives Marks the top side and the momentum. And now we go yellow and red. One upside down in a big way. And three and four, it's Lachlan McHugh who lands on all fours right in front of the leaders. See him moving around over there, steering wheel off. But the front end and rear end of that race car badly damaged. Red with 27 to go. And Lachlan McHugh out of the race car over there in turn three. So report from turn number three driver, Lockie McHugh is good. Talking to the rescue crew, you can see him there on flow, standing there. He's got his helmet off now, kind of checking over the front of that race car. But, Dylan, it's uh, not looking good for that one. Some damage on the front, the rear end, rear tire down. Yeah, and good Lots head, of problems. Good heads up there by the leaders who were coming down the backstretch right towards that with a head of steam to get it stopped uh, literally right there in front of the 25. Yeah. Boy, lots of damage there on the front end, completely knocked out of it. And again, oftentimes it's kind of determined, I think, by where you get the best launch through three and four is where the guys choose. So even though we've seen Rico run on the high side the first 13 laps, he's going to choose the bottom here. And everybody stays pretty orderly. Just watching as everybody goes by here. It looks like... 
Pretty standard procedure. Oh, there's Danny Dietrich. We get two on the inside line a little bit further back. Everybody up front, though, chooses their respective positions. 27 to go. Lights out, coming to green. Abreu on the inside, Marks on the outside of the front row. Larson and Macri in row two. Down the hill we go, green flag, back in the air. Good start by Rico Abreu to get out of the front straightaway. Marks to the middle, goes to the top of the racetrack. Oh, boy! Hang on, Cole Macedo. He cowboyed up and bounced through the holes in one and two, but lost three or four spots. Outside of the top ten he goes. Still Big trying. air. Still trying to gather it in his Macedo. Find a spot in line, he does so. Back up front. Marks getting wound up, trying to reel back in Rico Abreu. Rico goes to the top. He hits that same hole there on the top of the racetrack. Marks in the second spot. Kyle Larson third. Battle soon to be in the fourth position. Anthony Macri on the bottom. Buddy Cowboy right behind him. Now Chase Randall moving up. Battle for the lead. Avery squeezes. Marks nearly into the infield. Marks got a great run off of turn number four and tried to pull the trigger. Avery didn't let him have it. Here's Larson. Three car race for the lead. He challenges Marks for second. Can't get to the second spot. He rides in third. Goes back to the bottom. Marks to the top. Big run on Avery down the back straightaway. Rico Avery to the top of the box. This time Marks switches up, goes to the bottom. Diamond off the top, it's third for Kyle Larson. Rico is keeping Marks guessing. I guess that's the best thing he can hope for right now. He moves back to the high side through one and two, and that may not be the move. Here's Marks to the inside. Slide job for the lead. Brent Marks to the top spot. We come around the corner, 22 to go. Marks is your leader, Avery to second. Avery back to the top of the race track. Larson to the bottom, looking for third. Down the back straightaway in the third spot. Here comes Buddy Cofoy to the inside of Anthony Macri for fourth. Put Buddy Cofoy up one as they work top of turn four. Battles now for second as Mark starts to get away. Larson skimming the infield with the left front, goes side by side with Avery down the back stretch. Young Money goes to P2. Avery fading, he falls back to third. Avery tried that diamond line we saw Kyle use earlier. It didn't work for him, but Brent Marks goes to the high side of lap traffic down the back straightaway. As the caution is out. Tyler Courtney is slow on the front stretch. And comes to a stop in turn number one. The problems continue for the 7BC. Halfway, 20 down, 20 to go. And what a race up front. Wow. Courtney will head off the racetrack and go to the Indy Metal finishing work area. Remember they changed that steering gear after the dash. And wonder if it's, a, if it's a similar issue or something completely different. That 7BC has been snake bitten the last three races with the High Limit Sprint Car Series. Yeah, guys, and he came by here with a puff of smoke coming out of the rear end of that 7BC. So we saw the same thing, like you mentioned, with the steering gear, kind of the same thing. Almost we thought it was a motor. Uh, he's back in the end finishing his work here. Unfortunately, it's a little bit of a long way for me to get from the infield, but we'll hopefully get a shot of it and see if it's fixable. But you guys mentioned it. I mean, back-to-back -back flips in the High Limit Sprint Car Series after uh, being in contention for the points lead there with Kyle Larson after a 34 raceway. But it's all been for naught here for Tyler Courtney, although he's been a couple top five finishes with the All-Stars. But man, when it comes to High Limit, it seems like the bad luck gremlins seem to find that 7BC. And he took it right to the trailer. So he is done. Didn't even stop in the work area. So. Uh, third consecutive finish outside the top 20 for Courtney. Coming to green here with 19 to go. Marks chooses the inside. Larson to second. He's on the outside of the front row. Field rolling through turns three and four, getting set to go. Green back out. Here we go. Brent Marks gets a good run on him. Pulls him down the front two by five car lanes. Good start for Buddy Copoid as well. The Indy Race Park 71. He challenges Abreu for the third spot. Give it to Copoy down the back straightaway. He wants one more. Looks inside Larson for second. Couldn't quite get there. Rico back in the fourth spot. Now battle for fifth. Chase Randall gets by Anthony Macri for the five spot in turn number two. Down the back straightaway. Keep your eye on cut number nine. Closing in on Rico Abreu for the fourth spot. So they battle off a of turn four. Abreu is struggling here. He's falling back to Chase Randall. That'll be the race for the fourth spot. Abreu has it right now. Randall in fifth. Macri in sixth. Gio Selzy on the move. Here's a battle for second. Copoid inside Marson. Couldn't get there, but boy, Buddy tries him hard. Goes back to the top of one and two. Hits the hole there. Hands on to the first spot, makes a run down the back straightaway. Now this is where he's caught in the last two laps. Kyle to the high side, but he couldn't get there this time. But now Randall tries to put the slider on Rico for the fourth spot. Marks is really getting through the hole in turn one, probably better than anybody. Kofoy 
it got tight on the high side of one and two. Lost some ground on Larson as they race in the third spot. Larson second. Abram still runs fourth, trying to fend off Chase Randall. Oh, trouble! Oh, big flip. Upside down. That's Brent Marks, the race leader. I was just talking about how he was getting through that hole better than anybody in turn one and two, and it bites him. Race leader upside down. Already moving, moving around and climbing out of that 19M. Unbelievable. That was a ride. Brent Marks standing up in the car under his own power. Here's a look on Flo. We're going to get a great look at it here. Oh, and the one oh, time he boy. missed it. He, he, I was watching him, and he was getting, getting through there so well, and he hit it wrong just that one time, and he got that bunny hop, Yep. and away he went. We've seen so many guys get tripped up by that tonight, and that's exactly what happened to Marks. Brett Marks shaking his head as he climbed out of the race car. He'll take the helmet off and take a lonely, dejected walk back to the pit area, just staring at what's left of his number 19 race car. You guys hit the nail on the head, just shake his head, shook his head and said, made a mistake, ran right over that hole, got up on the bike and went for a big ride, but you guys can see it live on flow. The top wing just ripped to shreds right off the top of the cage. There's some right front damage on this car as well. Trying to figure out a way to get it up in the air. Uh, look, they're gonna attach the tether to the top side of the cage, but big impact again up on the cushion. There's a big old divot at the top side of this racetrack where that wing pierced the racetrack. But again, good to see Brett Marks out of the race car, but it seems like back-to-back -back weeks for the Highland Sprint Car Series, troubles with the leader, and this one bit Brett Marks. Yeah, last week Danny Dietrich had problems right in front of Marks, and he was collected in that really through no fault of his own. And as we watch the replay again on flow, it's uh, – You've got to be about perfect down there. Yeah. I mean, there is not much room for error on that ledge right in the entry to one because there's the hole, and so you bounce, and if you bounce and hit the cushion wrong or hit that ledge wrong, uh, that's what throws you around. And it is, uh, it is a thin line, a thin tightrope over there you have to walk. So, one to go in the shoes right here. Larson going to get his first shot up in the front of the field. He'll choose the bottom, and Kofoid, who – I think maybe has the best car on the racetrack. He, is, uh, he has been rolling. He'll go to the outside. Abreu to the bottom and Randall to the outside. 14 laps to go when we go back green. This, this one this is time. not over yet. It is not, <laughs> it is not. Gonna be fun. Larson on it early, down the hill. Green flag back in the air. Oh, Kofoy got into Abreu. Nearly spun Abreu into the infield. Everybody continues on, but Randall challenges Kofoy for second. Well, it worked for Randall. He was able to get back to the bottom quickly. Didn't get stuck up on the high side of the racetrack. Now Randall looking at Kofoy for the number two spot down the front two. Can't get there. Randall back on the inside for second. Side by side in turn two. Randall's got the bottom group working. Kofoy a little bit tricky on the high side. That may be the downfall as the Kofoy car rails around the outside of Randall and holds on to the second spot. Well, Kofoy Boy goes back to the bottom. Randall's really good down there. Now Rico tries the high side of the racetrack to get the third spot back. Can't get there now. Then two car lengths to Randall. Randall was hugging the slick through one and two. And we got a big pile up over in one and two. And Cole Macedo is the one that stops. And he must have got upside down because we go red. There was a couple cars over there involved. And everybody else, it looked like, drove away. It's like some pretty good top wing damage yep, to the, the top of the sideboard. On yeah, the, the sideboard on the right side there is kind of folded down on Macedo's car. Larson going to go back to the bottom. And everybody orderly through the top six. Oh, right to a last minute decision Whoa. to go to the bottom. And that's in line. He runs seventh. So. Inside lane is correct, if you will. All right, 12 laps to go. Larson, Kofoid, Randall, and Abreu. Your first two rows. Kyle's gone early and goes early again that time. He get a nice jump over Buddy Kofoid. Cleaner start in row two. Randall side by side with Rico, who's going to rip the top side. Rico to the outside of Kofoy, down the back foot over the second spot, put him there. Here comes Kofoy back to challenge. Gio now gets to the inside of Chase Randall. Put Gio up into the fourth spot. Randall trying to make the high side work, can't get there, but boy, Gio is good on the bottom. Gio sells he from inside row number nine to fourth. In the Aspen Air number 18, battle for second. Kofoy 
Detroit again, waging war with Rico Abreu. Rico committed to the high side once again. Kofoy trying to keep up. Rico trying to close the gap on Kyle Larson through three and four. Kofoy still in the third spot. Gio Selzy, the first car work at the bottom with Chase Randall running fifth. But look at Rico. He just smokes that hole there in one. Larson kind of made a mistake and left the gap off of turn number two. Here's Rico. He's got a run. Slider can't get there. Larson hangs on to it with eight to go. Down into turn one. Larson to the bottom. Rico back on the high side. He's going to run down the back straightaway. Kyle Larson up on the top. Here comes Rico. Your race is for the lead. You've got a new leader. Not for long. Larson back around him on the inside of the flag stand. Let's see how Larson adjusts here. He knows Rico's back there. He's got him up in the seat now. The last traffic ahead is going to play a factor in what Rico can do. Larson slides himself. Race to the line. Six to go. And Abreu's there again. Traffic's on the bottom. So your leader's got to go to the top. They both cowboy through the hole in one. Down the back straightaway. Larson to the outside. O'Reilly could go through the middle. Slides to the cushion. Here comes Rico. Looking to the inside. Can't get there off of four. That may have been the break Rico needed. He dials up the inside lane. Does he have enough momentum? He does. Abreu clears Larson. Kyle crosses back over. Four to go. This time by Larson goes back to the point. Rico tries to move off the top, right to the middle of four. Down to the inside of one, big slider coming, here he goes, can't get there. Larson cleared him, that may be the gap that he needs, unless Rico can get it going. Three laps to go, this time by, Selzy's on the move behind him, racing with Buddy Kofoy for third. Gio Selzy up into the third spot now, gets by Kofoy at the flag stand. Rico gathers things back in, trying to mount a late race card. This time by, tip of the green, two to go. Last traffic ahead for Larson. They're all on the bottom. Rico's not close enough to challenge, but he's trying to get wound up. They work down the back straightaway. Into three. Larson again slides himself up to the cushion. White flag. Rico Abreu about two car lengths, ten car lengths or so back now. As they work into one, Larson hot through the hole. Abreu gets the same. The gap's about ten car lengths. Down the back straightaway. Abreu not going to get there. Three in a row in the High Limit Sprint Car Series. Kyle Larson wins at Eagle. Abreu second, gave it all he had. Gio Selzy from inside row number nine to third. What'd you think of that, folks? Wasn't much more Rico could give him that he didn't already give him. And that was a valiant comeback from Rico who faded in the middle part of that race and still found a way to wage war with one of the best and it's three in a row for Kyle Larson in the High Limit Sprint Car Series and a $28,000 23 payday. So Kyle Larson making it up onto the scale. Boy, everything you wanted out of this racetrack you got tonight. You had a top and a bottom, you had slide jobs. When you can see those guys blasting into the corner, swapping sliders within inches of each other. Unreal finish here tonight. That is what it's all about, and that's why Kyle and Brad wanted to bring 410 Sprint Cars back to Eagle Raceway, and it delivered. Chris Wilner, imagine you're going to have a happy camper down there in victory lane. Six years ago, Kyle Larson and Darren Pittman put on one heck of a show. Tonight, it's Kyle Larson and Rico Abreu. And listen to these race fans. Chills right now down here in Victory Lane. The response from the crowd as Kyle Larson has found his way down to Victory Lane. Brad Sweet comes over. What a job by the entire crew, this racetrack in perfect condition. Kyle Larson, Rico, Geo from 17th put on a heck of a show. And Kyle's gonna notion get Savannah Sweet and get her up on top, his niece. Ladies and gentlemen, three in a row, Young Money, Kyle Larson. As the fireworks just pelt her Eagle Raceway, we'll get Kyle in here. We just told the crowd six years ago, you and Darren Pittman put on a show. Tonight it was you and Rico. Walk me through the battles there. Under 10 to go. Rico shows his nose. You probably thought it's go time. Uh, yeah, I was, honestly, I didn't feel like 
my pace in one and two slowed down a ton. I missed it you know, once there, and then I seen his nose in three and four, and I uh, was like, man, I don't know if he nailed the bottom that good behind me, and then he, I think he might have slid me in the next corner. I was like, okay, he's definitely on the top, and uh, I was nervous to move up there because my car was just really pogoey up in the entry of one, but um, I got up just in time, made a couple mistakes, and he threw a couple more sliders at me, and you know, one, he just uh, was a little too far back, and I was able to squirt around him, and then just really have to commit to uh, hit my marks, you know, back my, my effort down a little bit to, uh, to try and just not make mistakes. So thankfully we caught lap traffic too, and I could kind of close my entry off into three, and I don't know if he was still building runs behind me, but I felt like if I entered close enough to the lappers, he couldn't slide me. So um, just a great track. I mean, I hope you fans enjoyed that. Uh, Roger Hayden, they did a great job. I was worried. I was definitely worried, as I'm sure we all were when we saw it uh, so fast in the heat races, but man, that track was great. So uh, thanks to uh, thanks to everybody here at Eagle Raceway. I know it was uh, everybody in the pits, everybody in the stands, couldn't wait to get back here to watch some 410. So I'm glad we, Rico and I could put on a show and um, good to get a nice big check again. Wayne County, Tri-City, every, every track's giving you something different. Just how technical was this? You had a, seemed like most of the field was guessing early on just kind of where the track was going to go. And then obviously you had that big old hole in turn one. Yeah, honestly, I felt really good early. I could kind of, you know, Rico and Marks and Macri were, were kind of all over. Like you said, everybody was searching, which I was too, but I feel like I could make different lanes work better than them. And um, I knew the track was going to get to a point where, where it did get you know, more defined in a lane. And I wanted to get to the lead before that happened. And, and uh, you know, unfortunately, but thankfully for me, you know, Marks had his mistake there one and two, and I inherited the lead. And that's a, you know, shortly after that's about when the track kind of shifted, you know, with the red flag. So um, cool to uh, just have it all work out. And then, you know, Rico, I think he came for like the second row on that restart. And honestly, I was, I was waiting to see Buddy, not Rico. And uh, so he must have got the, just committed to the top there. So, um, it was dirty, I think, early up there, too. It finally cleaned off. Once I moved up, I was like, wow, it's got a ton of grip up there. So uh, just a fantastic track. I mean, 40 laps, and it changed so much. You just had to stay thinking, stay adapting. And uh, when, when you have that, it makes a lot of fun for the driver. I ask you this every time now, three in a row that you've been into victory lane, what it means to win in your series. But with this crowd at this racetrack that you and Brad have been so adamant about bringing back, what does this one mean? It, uh, I mean, the fireworks, everything. They... Uh, just did a really good job to make a, an event out of this. I mean, the crowd, I, I was looking up before hot laps and it was like packed. So uh, that was just so cool to see. You know, we've, we've heard about the anticipation from all the fans for, you know, basically a year now since we announced the series and in and the, and the schedule or going to Eagle. So um, I'm glad everybody showed up. I hope uh, when we come back here again in the future, everybody shows back up because it's some damn good racing here. I don't know why 410 Wings Sprint Car has never left Eagle because this place is awesome. Congratulations. Young Money, Kyle Larson, three in a row, takes home the $28,000, 23 check. And now over to the guy who's now been runner-up, back-to-back High Limit Sprint Car Series races. Started on the front row, ladies and gentlemen, Rico Abreu. All right, Rico. First of all, I got to ask you about the early part of the race. It feels like all of a sudden after that first yell, the car started to go away. You fell back, I think, as far as sixth. How did you find something left in that 24 there in the second half? Uh, just execution, really. Um, you know, I just needed to do a few things a lap sooner than I did and uh, fix some angles, and my car got a whole lot better. So um, just thankful for this team. They do an amazing job. They don't give up on me. I know my car's going to be there right at the end of these races, so it's just a real discipline on being patient. Um, you know, and then once the 19 and the 57 got by me, I just had to kind of get everything back together and regroup and uh, just really focus on hitting my marks. Um, you know, I had to figure out where my car wanted to be, and I lost a few spots doing that. Um, you catch traffic, and there's just a process of a lot of things going on, and um, I felt like I got on my wing two laps too late, and that was um, the part of me losing the spots. And then choosing the outside row, I struggled a little bit on restarts there tonight with my motor not taking off as good with the air is, uh, you know, really muggy tonight, so it's difficult to fuel these engines to get them to take off on low-speed low RPMs. So, um, but I just, um, that was just badass racing. Um, you guys, that's what sprint car racing is all about. Um, you know, we're, we're witnessing one of the best drivers in the world right here in our backyard. Um, so it's, it's cool to run up and compete with Kyle. Um, you know, you know he gives 110%, and he, uh, he really brings everybody to the next level in racing. And... Um, you know, I just thought that was uh, that was just a good race.
Congratulations, Rico Abreu, another second place finish. His time's coming in the High Limit Sprint Car Series. And then how about this race, fans? 17th to third, your $50,000 man from Lakeside, Gio Selzy. Listen to that crowd. First of all, how the heck did you wheel that thing with that big old rut in turn one and, and go from, what, inside row nine all the way to a podium finish? Well, I had a very specific plan. Don't go near it. So <laughs> it, uh, it worked out. But no, you know, I think everyone, no one wanted to start on the top. And uh, I think I gained a couple rows there on the choose cone. He just kind of ran the middle, which seemed to be better than right around the bottom. So um, what an incredible night. Like, I've never been here before. Um, stands were packed. You guys are, you guys are awesome. We can hear you over, over the roar of the engine. So um, it's just so cool. Uh, I appreciate you guys coming out. So um, the High Limit Series are doing a great job. Seems like they had to hiccup last time they raced, but tonight went very smooth. So um, I was a little worried there after qualifying. We heard an engine, and I was kind of mad we, we burned our one race on, on here. But uh, awesome racetrack. It, it seemed to widen out. Very, very tricky surface. Um, created good racing. I was going to say, you come back after Lakeside. It's been a while since we've seen you. I mean, what is it about this series that maybe separates itself apart from the others? Yeah, it's very similar to the Outlaw format, pretty much identical. So, um, you know, that's what I'm used to racing every night. You got to time good, and tonight we time like shit. So, um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, it's, it's a really fun series, a lot of good cars. I think I ran behind the two best cars in the country right now. So, um, yeah, yeah, cool event. I saw them guys sliding each other, hoping they would kind of get tangled up. But, um, yeah, I just kind of tried to race smart and made it through. Congratulations. Gio Selzy comes home third after 17th place starting spot. Dylan Tony, another high limit gem, this time at Eagle Raceway as a first timer. I cannot wait to come back. I hope you folks at home and you folks here at the racetrack enjoyed that one. That was spectacular. And one thing that we all love about Gio, he's always going to tell it like it is and, <laughs> and, and nothing else. So great drive for him. Great drive by uh, the top two as well. We'll give you a full field rundown. Kyle Larson is your winner. Rico Abreu second. Gio Selzy finished third again from 17th. He, I uh, have to imagine, is your hard charger. Buddy Kofoid finished fourth. Anthony Macri was fifth. Chase Randall was sixth. Zeb Wise seventh. Jake Buback, nice run for him, eighth. Aaron Reitzel, ninth, and Corey Day finished 10th. 11th is Corey Eliason, 12th is Ryan Timms, 13th, Austin McCarl, 14th goes to Brady Bacon, 15th, Danny Dietrich, 16th goes to Robbie Price, 17th is Brian Brown, Riley Goodno, 18th, Blake Hahn, 19th, Sam Hafertief Jr., 20th. And your back few cars, 21st was Dusty Zomer, Cole Macedo was 22nd, Brent Marks finished 23rd, Tyler Courtney, 24th, Lachlan McHugh, 25th, and Jack Dover, 26th. Well, final thoughts. I think uh, the hype delivered. I think we both expected it would, and that was, a, uh, that was a darn good race. Excellent racetrack. Awesome field of cars. Outstanding crowd here yep. tonight. You guys were awesome. I don't know what more anybody could have wished for, but Eagle Raceway delivered in spades tonight. Absolutely. Kyle Larson going to extend his points lead with his third straight victory. High Limit Sprint Car Series is off for a little while. We've got about a month and a half or so uh, before we get back in action at the end of July, the Grandview Speedway, but then it gets busy. Race the next week at Kokomo on August the 1st. Then we go to Husets uh, the week after the Knoxville Nationals, and then uh, we've only got three races left after that. So halfway through, and Kyle Larson, as we expected, the man to beat. That'll conclude our coverage tonight on Flow Racing for Chris Wilner in the infield and Tony Bacco. And my name is Dylan Welch on behalf of our entire Flow Racing crew. Thanks for watching. Drive safe if you're here at the racetrack, and we hope to see you down the road at Grandview at the end of July.